We've been building the network monitoring uh, project for Shadium for a couple of weeks now, right? So let me quickly run through what we have. So we have this uh, network status page. You can see some of the different services that uh, Shadium has, and you can see their state. Um, documentation is online. The archival one server is online and a couple of all these other services. Uh, the website is offline because we've turned it off uh, via code. Uh, but I can definitely turn it on. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, another thing that we have is we started building a couple of other pages into this service. Uh, so if I go to slash uptime, uh, we should see that now we have some kind of historical data coming back uh, for the last one hour. Uh, the, every two minutes, based on our configuration, we will get another arrow here letting us know if the website is offline or if the documentation is now online. Um, so we have some historical data uh, showing us uh, the uptime of these services. And then we have the latency page that shows us the latency graph of all the response times from all our service polls. Um, so if I hover over it, you see the time uh, in seconds that it takes to fetch a response from all of these services. Uh, so this is the last thing that we built uh, on the last stream when we were working on this project. Uh, but today, what we want to do is uh, add a header or even a footer, uh, if time allows us, to this page so that it, it looks a bit more like an actual project, right? Uh, and I've gone ahead to create like a an Excalidrum mockup of what that would look like. Um, so this is the mockup that I, let me uh, zoom into it a bit. So this is the mockup that I prepared. Uh, so the footer is just gonna be, we're gonna have like a Shadium logo here and we have uptime and latency at the top, at the top right, so that we can, you know, click around. At the moment, if I want to visit any of those pages, I have to directly edit the URL. Uh, but let's see if we can add a, a nav bar here, uh, a header, that is gonna have some nav items and then we can click around from there. Uh, if time allows, we can uh, try to sort out the mobile responsiveness of it as well, uh, so, that the nav, so that the nav items can be you know, uh, responsive on mobile screens. Uh, and if we are able to finish all of that, uh, then we can move on to the, to the footer side of things. Uh, so that's the thing that we wanna to do today. So stick around. Uh, if you have any thoughts, any ideas, any opinions, on things you want me to do while we're on the stream, just let me know, and you know we'll try to we'll try to do them. Uh, okay, I'm going to head over to uh, VS Code where the code is running, and we're going to start diving in. Um, again, uh, do let me know. I I think I've started sharing my screen. I have. Okay. All right. So we're going to uh, start by creating um, a component directory here. Uh, because we want to have a header and a footer component, right? Uh, it's not going to be a new file, it's going to be a new folder. So let's do components. And in here, we want to have two uh, components. Uh, the first one is going to be the header, and the second one is going to be the footer. And then uh, in each of those, let's create, uh, this is where we want to have our GSX. So let's create an index.csx file for the footer and do the same thing for the header. Right. Um, and then to you know put some content on the screen for both of these, let's just do export the default function. Let's call it, we are in the header. So let's call it header. And here uh, we can return some GSX. So let's do, let's have a H1 here that says, uh, this is the header. And I'm gonna copy the same thing and basically replicate that in the footer except this time I want to change this to footer. Now, uh, if we look back on the browser, we don't really see any changes in our app. And that is because we haven't um, used any of these components that we've created. Uh, actually, let me zoom in a bit. I don't know how visible this is for, for all of you, but let me zoom in a bit. 
and then uh, let me collapse this what I'll do is I'll go into the layout file and let me import those components that I just created so let's get header from the header component and let's get the footer as well and then uh, what I want to do is inside of our body uh, instead of just showing the children prop I'm going to show the header here and then the footer so basically I'm, I'm wrapping it uh, inside of the header and footer components so if I save that uh, now we should be able to see this is the header and this is the footer so uh, that is good so far most of this um, so we we'll probably spend a couple of time on the stream today just going uh, trying to style these components right usually I would prepare the the JSX uh, and mostly focus on the logic for the things that we work on um, but for this one, I, there's not much logic going on, so I opted to just do the uh, the styling on the stream. Um, so that's mostly what we're going to spend time doing, just uh, getting it to look the way we want it to look. Uh, let's let's start with the with the header, right? Um, uh, the first thing I want to do is I wonder if we should do this first or we should do it later. Um, Let's specify some navigation items, some nav items. So I'm going to do, uh, they said we should use let now. So <laughs> let's use let, uh, nav items. Yeah. So this, we're going to have two files here. Uh, one with the name of uptime. And we're going to have the link b slash uptime. And let's have a second item. Name will be latency and the link will be slash latency. All right, that's it. That's what I wanted to have there. And um, actually I have to, let me get rid of this and use the actual thing. Let's use the header. <coughs> and uh, again, let me look at the sketch of what we're trying to build here we want to have uh, this header component right it's going to have the shadium logo at the left side and on the right side we're going to have the uptime and the latency uh, links all right so let's um let's get to work i'm going to have enough and in there i want to first have that um I want to first have the logo that we talked about just now so I'm, I'm going to wrap that in an anchor tag um, this should lead back to the home page and then uh, what I want to have is have an image tag here that points to I have this logo inside of my assets directory so assets and s logo dot uh, that's what I want to pull that in that's where I want to pull that in from so let's do slash assets slash S logo dot webp uh, and for the alt I'm just gonna do shadium logo <coughs> excuse me and um, maybe we can give it um, some height and weight so let's do a height of 16 pixels and an auto weight Okay, uh, so this should account for the logo that we want. Uh, we will still style like the header tag and the nav, all of that. I just want to get the markup out of the way first. And let's have um, a div right below it. This is where we're going to have our nav items, basically. So I'm happy with this. Um, we map through our nav items and we display the name of each item and for the links we provide that in the uh, href attribute okay uh, let me do a bit of styling now um, actually I start from the header yeah it's like 90% of the work we're going to do on the stream today is mostly just writing to win CSS classes um, for the header and you know for the footer if we have enough time to get to it 
Um, <coughs> all right, I'm gonna start with um, MX Auto for this. Let's set it flex. Let's have a max width of 7XL. Let's have all the items be centered. We want to justify between since we have uh, two items inside of the nav, uh, the nav and the the image for the logo and the nav items. So let's keep them between. And then let's have a padding of six pixels. Then on large screens and above, we want to have a px of eight. And I think that should be it for now. Um, yeah, if if anyone wants wants me to style the, any of these things differently, just let me know. Uh, I I want this to be collaborative because I feel like we everyone on the stream likely has some. Uh, styling ideas so I, I will occasionally go back to discord to check if there are any comments uh, but if you want me to do anything just uh, put it in the chat um, all right so for the uh, anchor okay before we get to the anchor uh, I think we should probably move this I'm gonna move it into the nav item because that's where we want to have the ju justify between to apply to these two items. And then um, for this, it's, I wonder if we should underline them. Let's do 1.5 and a padding of 1.5 as well. Uh, I don't think we need to underline them. We, we, we'll play around with it when we get there. Uh, and then for the nav items, I want it to be hidden on smaller screens, right? Only visible on large screens and above. So we do mobile first, so hidden by default. And then on large screens and above, we want to set it to flex and let's also give it a space or a gap okay space of 10 let's maybe do 12. okay maybe i should look at this now see what it looks like all right uh that is what we wanted uptime latency and home awesome so we have this working to uh, at least to the extent that we want um but if, if you look at the design we have, we also want to account for the mobile views, right? Uh, let me see what happens when we look at the mobile view of this. Yeah, so we see under the logo and uh, the nav items are invisible because that's what we, we planned to happen, right? We made it uh, hidden by default on mobile. So uh, to set up the mobile menu we need uh to use the headless ui react package and maybe also some hero icons uh, let me do that here i'm going to drag this up a bit get into the front end folder and let's npm install uh, i think it's at headless ui react and at Hero icons react. So let's install those. Um, really, what I want to get from there is the headless UI is going to give us the dialog that we're going to use to show like a, like a pop up for the for the navigation items uh, when we're on mobile, and we're going to grab some icons from the hero icons package as well. Uh, so that should allow us to do things like let me import dialog from headless UI react and let's get two icons I think it's called um, bars no bars three icon and the X mark icon um, this is going to be from 
20 and solid. Alright, that's where that's gonna come from. And now um, I've also said what I want to do now is show what should be available on mobile, right? At the moment uh, on mobile, we only get the logo, but we don't get this. So what we want to show uh, when we're on mobile is that like a button that you can click to reveal the model, the, the model that will show you the nav items. Uh, so let's, let's add that button here. Uh, I'm going to do a div and in there, uh, I'm going to have a button. Right. And then in the button, I want to show that bars icon that I just in imported. Um, all right, I'm going to accept this for now. And for this, I'm going to make it visible on mobile screens. So let's do flex by default and on large screens on the above. Let's make this to be hidden. All right. Um, let's see what we get. Uh, so if I check on mobile, now I get it. Okay. That's what we want. Cool. And then um, the next thing that we should probably account for is uh, what happens when you click on that icon. So let's uh, grab use state. Uh, for we to be able to use state, if you're not familiar with uh, Next.js 14, everything is um, server rendered by default. So if you want to use state, you need to mark the component as a client component uh, just by doing use client. Um, so now that we want to use state, what I want to do is, again, let's use let. And we want to have, let's do mobile menu. Mobile menu open, set mobile menu open, you state the false. And then when this button is clicked, let's pass and unclick. What we want to do, one second, is just toggle the value of set mobile open to true. And then uh, when the value is true, what we want to show is the dialogue, basically the pop-up that's going to display the um, the contents of our nav items. And let me see if I have that here. So this is uh, the documentation for the dialogue uh, elements that I want to use. Uh, so we're gonna have the dialogue itself that has an open and unclosed uh, attribute and we have the dialogue panel that is going to basically show the content that we want to show when uh, that button is clicked. Um, so let me let me get back to using it here. Um, I want to use it outside of the nav actually. So let's do dialogue and in here we're going to have the dialogue panel and in the dialogue panel we're going to have the content we want to show um, but first let's uh, let's set up this uh, okay one one second let me see if I've missed out on styling any of these things before we move on to the dialogue um, I don't think so maybe the button yeah okay let's let's add some CSS classes to the button and then let's have and I'm 2.5 let's have it to be inline flex uh, let's center all the items vertically and horizontally as well and then let's give it some rounded borders medium um, maybe some padding maybe 2.5 and yeah that should be that should be it and let's just make it a type of button and yeah I think that 
that should do it for our button. Uh, if anything doesn't look right, we'll, we'll come back and tweak the styles. Let me quickly have a peep at Discord, see if anything's going on, nothing, all right. Uh, okay, so uh, for the dialogue we wanna show, let's do as Dave. We want to pass in open. Uh, remember when I showed you that docs, we, we saw that value. Uh, the open and the onclose attributes. So for this, it's going to be mobile open for the onclose. I'm going to set the mobile open to false. Cool. And then um, we want to start working on the dialog panel, right? Inside the dialog panel, the first thing we want to do is basically replicate what we had before, right? This, the logo, and the nav items. Let me actually copy that. Uh, but I want to put it in a parent div here. So let's have this. Um, the difference though is that I want to use the X mark icon here. And uh, when it's clicked, I want to set this to false. And I'm gonna style it a little bit different from um, what we had before. So let me actually start with the, the parent div. So here we're gonna flex the items and have the items be centered and uh, justify Bitcoin, maybe without it padding since we already have that. And then for the logo, it's going to be it's going to remain as it is actually i don't mind that then the button is going to be styled significantly differently so let's try <coughs> sorry uh 2.5 again let's do let's give it some rounded borders maybe medium as well Let's do a uh, padding of two, two maybe yeah, instead of 2.5. And let's, I think that's probably good enough for now. Okay, um, so now uh, the dialog panel is going to show us uh, a logo and our button to close the, the dialog. And then the other thing we want to do though is show the items that we had i want to have items so that people can people on mobile can still you know click around and see what we've got going on um let's do that right after this parent div let's make a new div element uh, and here we're gonna have a i'm gonna do margin top just to give it some spacing from the initial one of minus six and flow to the road. Cool. Then in here, let's have another div element. This one is going to have a. Oh, hang on. Again, I want this. Uh, so I'm not looking at uh, Discord, so I don't know what's going on. If you need, if you need me to do anything differently, just uh, put some things in the chat. Uh, otherwise, let's just keep it going. Um, Imagine vertical of uh, six, maybe instead of two, let's do six. Let's uh, divide. And let's give it a color of gray 200. Uh, actually, let's do gray. I wonder what color will be most fitting for this by 10. And okay, that's it. So what we can do now is we can just grab our nav items that we had before and have that be here. Uh, the difference though is that we don't want to have it hidden by default anymore. We don't have, we don't need all these um, queries for large screens. We want to just space the items out by maybe two. Let's do two and maybe we can have like a 
quite a cool podium of six pixels. All right. Um, let me quickly see if there's something we need to do differently here. I'm, I'm just going to save this and let's have a look at what we get. And then we can tweak it as we need. Okay. Seems that clicking it is working though, but I'm not seeing any changes. Let's see. Oh. <coughs> What is that? Hang on. Where is my on close? Yes, this is what I mean. Change that. Okay, so I think our modal, uh, our dialogue on close should uh, be working as expected now. One thing that okay, I I think there's something else that we need to do. Well, let me uh, let me see if I get my X icon yet. I don't get it. All right. Let's debug. I'm going to style my panel, Let's see if that could be. Okay, great. So I'm going to give it uh, a white background. And let's give it a fixed ins and insert of zero. going to have a z index of 10 with a full width let's do overflow vertical little bit automatic and let's give it some padding horizontally and vertically and maybe we need to also specify how it's supposed to look on um, let's do on small let's do a ring one we also want to set the max width on small screens let's do sm small instead of md and then um maybe we i think that probably should be okay for now well, let's make this y full width okay i'm gonna save this and something else i think i should actually do is let's add let's take over the screen here with this div to basically cast like a takeover everything else that is supposed to show here and we can that would allow us to see the contents um, of the dialog panel so let me set this to fixed as well and set the insert to zero and the z index to turn okay yeah I let me try this again see what we get Right, so now we get open, close, open and close. Uh, uptime and latency are showing up side by side, so we need to make sure they show up vertically. Then let me find where that is. Do not have items. Let's do three. Let's give you a block. Uh, no need to give you rounded borders. I'm just going to do and two. Let's do. Um, maybe leading seven to improve how the text looks 
Um, let's see, what else do we want to do? Maybe a text base should do it. We'll save that. There we go. So now we can go home on mobile, we can go on latency, we get our latency graph, and we can close that. Awesome. Okay, um, let me look at this. We've got our header working as expected on both desktop and also on mobile. Let me see how much time we've got. Oh, we've we've gone way over time. Um, all right. Let me. Do you? Uh, would you all want me to continue with the footer, or should we continue doing that next time? Um, yeah, we we are already a little bit over time, but I'm happy to keep going if you all want to hang out with me. Um, otherwise, we we will continue building the footer next week, or we can actually even start working on the latency graph. Um, you just you all let me know what you think in, in the chat. Yeah, I, I think the the header component is working exactly as we as we wanted to. Um, on the next stream, let me let me uh, share what we're going to be doing on the next stream. We're going to be talking about how to. If you look at the, if you go to at the moment, if you go to Shadium and go to the events tab in Discord, you will see that we have two other events coming up. Those events are going to be uh, next next week Thursday and the following Thursday after that. We're going to be talking about how you can find good first issues on uh, GitHub. Uh, and then when you do find the good first issues on the Shadow repository, uh, we're going to walk you through the process of working on those issues and making your own contribution uh, to helping us build Shadium. It could be on this repo that we're working on here. It could be on a different repository, uh, but that's what we're going to be doing uh, next week. And the week after that, we're going to continue working on this uh, network monitoring page. Um, we're probably going to maybe create the footer on that screen, uh, on that stream and then uh, continue to even work on the latency graph to split it into two um, because we want to have like website documentation and explorer be one graph uh, while the archiver servers the json rpc server and the monitor be a different graph you know uh, we think it's going to be better that way if you also want to help us do any of this if you want to send the pr that you know creates the footer component that's welcome if you want to send a pr that splits the latency graph into two that's also welcome. So what we are doing uh, is we're working in the OSS dev channel. Uh, if you go to the Shadium Discord, uh, scroll down to the developers category, you will see an OSS devs channel. That's where we're doing all of this open source work. Um, if you want to join us, uh, please jo hop on that channel. Uh, we're going to be sharing issues that we create. We're going to be encouraging uh, contributions. So all the developers who are in that in that channel are helping us build Shadium. And when we tell the story of you know how we built the first auto scaling layer one blockchain. Um, we want to have your name be part of that story. Uh, so do join us on that channel and I hope to see you all next week. Uh, thank you for joining. Bye everyone.